So, yes, thank you again so much, Dr. Rova. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, it made my my job much easier now because I'll, I'll be able to go much faster for my presentation. Um, and, uh, that was uh, really, really useful. Um, so without any further um, introductions, let's uh, start again to our lecture of uh, normal skin uh, pathology. So um, I hope everyone's ready now. Um, if you have any questions, you know, you can either shoot your questions or, or, or um, write it in the chat box. Um, so what we see here is uh, the regular, the, the normal outline of what you expect to see on a, on a skin uh, biopsy. You can see your epidermis in the top layer here. You can see below it is the dermis and below the dermis is the subcutaneous fat. Um, uh, first things first, we go to the epidermis and we'll talk a little bit in detail uh, about the epi epidermis and its, uh, and its different layers. Um, so what we have on top is uh, what you all already know now is the sacrum corneum. Uh, normally it's a, bas it's a basket weave uh, pattern and uh, uh, it's uh, usually um, uh, cover covers like on average half of the or, or a quarter of the total thickness of the epidermis. You rarely find it thin in conditions, but very often uh, in, in certain pathologies, it might be thickened, which we'll talk about later. Below the stratum corneum, you've got your uh, granular layer, stratum granulosum. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's usually very thin, like, you know, not more than two or three cell layers thick. Uh, and, and, uh, and you can see the cells are very granular. Below it is the spinous layer, or stratum spinosum, which makes up majority of the uh, epidermis and you can see between the uh, cells there's always the desmosomes and, uh, the, and the desmosomes are the reasons why the cells look spiny because when they start out first as the, as the basal uh, cells in the basal layer when they start out as cuboidal as they climb up to the to the top of the epidermis um, the the cell junctions uh, they have with other cells keep keep pulling them from side to side and so they develop like a spiny appearance and so uh, these are the different uh, uh, types of uh, layers of the epidermis. Um, there are several different cell types you would find in the uh, uh, epidermis. Uh, the most uh, prevalent one, of course, are the uh, keratinocytes, which make up uh, more than, or, or maybe like 90% of the cells of the uh, epidermis. Um, however, there are several other cell types in the epidermis. Uh, one of them is what we see right here. Uh, which is, uh, if you can see how it's like a bean-shaped or kidney, or, or like a kidney bean-shaped uh, cell. Um, this is the uh, 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 Langerhans cell. Um, and uh, what we also see here is uh, this cell. Can anyone tell me what uh, this cell uh, is? Melanocyte. Uh, uh, correct. That is a melanocyte. And how do I know? The difference between a melanocyte and a keratinocyte on on on, uh, on uh, histology. Well, I mean, we do have a lot of fantastic stains now to, to be able to, to show us the difference. But on just plain H and E, there are some hints that would uh, help us know. So let, let's compare it, for example. So this is a, a keratinocyte, okay? And you know, when you when you when you make a H and E section and you fix the the the, the slide and then it goes to processing. Some artif artifactual clefts can happen in structures, like here in the dermis, for example, and in the epidermis, you can see clefts between structures. And like we said earlier, because the epidermal uh, uh, keratinocytes have desmosomes uh, between their cytoplasm and the surrounding cells, the, when, when a clefting happens, this, the whole cytoplasm will be pulled away from the nucleus because the cytoplasm or the cytoplasmic membrane is stuck to other cytoplasmic membranes. So the whole cytoplasm gets pulled away so you would only see a nucleus when, uh, from the keratinocyte, and the cytoplasm will be outside the cleft. But in melanocytes, you know, melanocytes don't have any desmosomes. So, so, so when they get uh, separated from other cells, you can see their cytoplasm tagging along with the nucleus. See, if you see, if you see cytoplasm, then, uh, then, uh, then it's uh, most probably a, a, a new uh, uh, melanocyte. Another feature that might be less reliable, but also helpful in some times, is uh, is uh, where you can see which cells are uh, pigmented and which one is not. So the ones that usually you see them pigmented are most likely keratinocytes. And uh, and uh, if you can see here, uh, the ones that are usually not pigmented 
are the manasites. Like, you know, because, you know, how, you know, Walter White says in Breaking Bad, you know, suppliers are not users. You know, they just supply and they make, but they don't use the, 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 the melanin. So these are the different uh, um, uh, cells in the epidermis. There's one more cell that we don't see here. It's very hot to see because it's, uh, it's much less numerous than the others, which is the Merkel cell, which is part of the uh, nerve endings of cells. And uh, this cell, we usually uh, need stains to see it. And uh, we'll talk about it later when we talk about uh, uh, neoplasms, because that's where its uh, significance to a dermatologist is. Uh, next, uh, we'll just go through a few examples on some abnormalities. We already went the, earlier through them, so I won't go into much detail. So here we can see a few abnormalities uh, compared to what we saw earlier. Uh, we have acanthosis, thickening of the, of the stratum spinosum. There is hyperkeratosis, which is increased in the uh, stratum corneum. And uh, remember, when, when the stratum corneum thickens, it can th uh, thicken in several ways. Uh, the, the main two ways is, uh, is either parakeratotic, where it retains the nuclei, and orthokeratotic, where it does not retain the nuclei. So uh, 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 hyperkeratosis can be divided into two, parakeratosis, which we can see here, and orthokeratosis. And uh, orthokeratosis also, in turn, can be divided into compact or basket weave, which we'll talk about later. So what happens here, uh, this is an example of psoriasis. Why is there perikeratosis? Because normally the, the skin cells take about like 28 days to reach all the way to the stratum corneum. And by that time, the nucleus have di has died. And all you can see is an anucleated cells, as you, can, as you saw uh, here, for example, in this uh, slide. So you see, there's no nucleus because the cells, by the time they reached up, they all died. But in psoriasis, on the other hand, um, the cells reach the top so fast, it's like five to seven days. So they didn't have time to lose their, uh, their uh, um, nuclei. Another feature that uh, is also no, uh, noteworthy in this uh, slide is the degrees of granular layer, uh, almost complete absence of granular layer here. Uh, uh, so, so what we call hypogranulosis. Um, the next slide uh, will uh, is uh, discuss pretty much the same thing in terms of perikeratosis, but uh, it, it is an important example of telling you that there's more than one mechanism of perikeratosis. So we got the first mechanism, which is inflammatory, and and the cells uh, go up so fast. But in this case of uh, actinic keratosis. The, the, you can see uh, a confluent uh, uh, perikeratosis, but uh, the problem here is not that the cells are going up so high because they, they, can, they go up uh, more or less at the same uh, 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 speed. But what happens here is because you know it's, it's, it's cancer and, and cells just wouldn't die. So that's another mechanism of perikeratosis is when, when just the, the cells basically just refuse to die. Um, the next uh, example, uh, what I want to, to show you is, uh, 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 this is an example of lichen suplex chronicus. So we saw earlier how a hypogranulosis looks like. Now you see how a hypergranulosis, see how the, the granular cytoplasm uh, of cells goes all the way down. This is much more than the three or five uh, layers we allow it to be normally, or, or two to three layers we normally allow it to be. There's also irregular, like the Dr. Lava told you earlier. So the regular uh, acanthosis is typical of psoriasis. Irregular uh, acanthosis is typical of lichen simplex chronicus and, uh, and paragonodularis. Moving on to the next slide. Um, uh, a little bit of the opposite in terms of the spinous layer. So we saw earlier acanthosis, and now we see atrophy. Look how thin the, 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 the stratum spinosum is. And in contrast, see how thick the stratum corneum is. So, so, so this is also an example of hyperkeratosis. But in contrast to what we saw earlier uh, of, of parakeratosis, what we see here is orthokeratosis. And uh, when we talked about the two types of orthokeratosis, we talked about compact and basket weave. Here we see it as a compact. You see how thick red stratum corneum, it's not basket weave, it's just thick and uh, brick-like uh, red. This is an example of lichen like sclerosis epitrophicus. It's the uh, uh, red, uh, blue, and uh, white sign. See the red stratum corneum, the, Thin epidermis and then uh, the 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 uh, uh, hyalinized white dermis and usually below it is the blue um, uh, band of uh, lymphocytes. Uh, moving on to our next slide, this is more or less the same for uh, another case uh, showing uh, um, hypergranulosis. If you can see here, thick hypergranulosis, more or less basket weave uh, hyperkeratosis. Uh, just to show you the difference between uh, the two. 
This is a, a nice uh, example I wanted to show you of uh, how uh, to contrast perikeratosis and orthokeratosis. This is an example of uh, ILVIN, inflammatory linear verrucous epidermal nevus. You can see how an area could be, uh, there's an alternating perikeratosis and then orthokeratosis and then perikeratosis and then orthokeratosis. And I use this example to show you how uh, in most situations, in 99.99% in of conditions, when you have a perikeratosis, it is almost always accompanied by a, a hypogranulosis below it. And when you have an orthokeratosis, you would either have a normal or thickened uh, granular layer. In this case, it's a normal granular layer. So oh, there are a few exceptions to that uh, rule, um, uh, like, for example, axillary granular perikeratosis, where you would find uh, uh, perikeratosis with hypergranulosis. And for example, an exam uh, another example is ichthyosis vulgaris, where there's orthokeratosis, but also hypogranulosis. Um, so we saw a little bit of the abnormal, but let's see some of the normal. So what we see here is a thick, compact uh, uh, stratum corneum. It is so big, it is so thick, but it is also so normal. This is the acral skin, and uh, you need to know your, your uh, anatomy of different areas. So uh, in order not to overdiagnose the uh, conditions, so here is a, a, is a very normally thickened stratum corneum that you would see in your acral skin. Um, another uh, um, uh, normal abnormal feature, let's say, is uh, here. If you can see here, the, thin, the skin is very thin. It, uh, normally, you would say it's uh, atrophic. Um, uh, dermis is, is pretty thin as well, but we'll talk about the dermis later. Um, and this is also normal because uh, you need to know the difference not only in terms of body location, you need to know the difference in terms of age. Um, the, the, this patient is an old patient, so with age, you, you tend to lose the volume in both your epidermis and dermis. And this is a case of uh, so, uh, solar purpura, or some might call it senile purpura, which, uh, in which uh, older individuals can have uh, decreased uh, uh, thickness in dermis, supporting the vessels, and so easily uh, bruised. Um, next, what we'll talk about is, an, uh, is a major layer of the skin, which is the dermis, situated between the epidermis and uh, subcutaneous fat. Uh, it's divided into a papillary dermis and a reticular dermis. Papillary dermis is, uh, is the part that hugs the epidermis. If you can see here, uh, it's the interface with the, it has the interface between the reach ridges of the epidermis and the dermis papilla, which uh, it gets its name from, the papillary dermis. Um, the dermis contains uh, mainly two uh, 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 families of structures, the connective tissues, which we'll talk about uh, right now, like you know, the derm, the collagen and the elastic fibers and all. And it has uh, an excellent supporting structures like blood vessels and hair follicles, which we'll talk about a little later. So uh, starting with collagen, collagen makes up at least 80 to 85% of the uh, dermis. It gives its, its strength, uh, rigidity, and, and uh, integrity. Um, it, it thickens uh, the, the, the collagen fibers. It, 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 it appears, as you can see here, like you know, uh, fibers mostly running east uh, to west. Um, and they get or gain thickness as they go deeper towards the, uh, the, the lower layers of the reticular dermis. Um, the the, the collagen uh, can have uh, several abnormalities. Um, uh, sometimes it can th be thinned, sometimes it can be thickened, and the uh, thickening of the collagen can happen in uh, two forms, uh, which I will uh, illustrate to you right now. Uh, the first form here is, uh, is, is a case of uh, morphia, um, um, where you get uh, what we call sclerosis. So sclerosis is the thickness of the dermis uh, in a depositional way, where there's a lot of uh, collagen gets deposited, but uh, elastic fibers or Ground substance uh, uh, does not get damaged or changed very much. Um, another form of, uh, of uh, increased collagen or thickness of collagen is uh, fibrosis, which in contrast to sclerosis is a more scarring process. If you can see here, the, 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 the difference is uh, in, uh, like, you know, sometimes we use the terms synonymously in the past, like sclerosis, fibrosis, but in, in reality, they are very different. So what, the, what you see in a fibrotic or a scarring process is uh, very striking. The, the, the horizontal uh, fibroblast, as you can see here, and the, the, the vertical uh, uh, blood vessels, uh, you rarely see these, this feature in any other condition, and uh, along with it is the thickness of the uh, collagen. And another helpful uh, feature that would uh, 
make us uh, differentiate between sclerosis and fibrosis is staining for the elastic fibers because elastic fibers are decreased definitely in, in this condition, uh, like you know, any scarring or fibrotic condition, but there will not be much change in a sclerotic uh, condition. Moving on to the opposite of, uh, of increase in dermis, uh, which we he what we see here is a decrease in dermis. And uh, this is a case of chronic Lyme disease where they get the acral uh, thinning. Um, uh, you can see here very thin uh, uh, collagen compared to uh, what we saw earlier. Um, we, uh, next is, uh, oh, sorry, I uh, went uh, through some of the slides uh, very fast. I'll uh, have to go back uh, a few slides. Uh, sorry about that. I went really, I jumped uh, the slides really fast. So yes, um, I think now, yeah, we're, right, we're in the right place right now. So um, uh, uh, now, now that we talked about the abnormal, let's talk about the normal again. So again, we're with the acral skin with the thickened stratum corneum, but just like acral skin can have thickened stratum corneum, uh, uh, the dorsal hand, for example, can have a thin uh, dermis compared to the other places of the body. So we don't uh, get uh, fooled by that and like you know, think of it as a, a decrease in uh, dermis or atrophy. And um, there are other parts of the body, for example, like the back, where you can have maybe your thickest dermis of the whole body. See here, see the, how tiny the epidermis looks because we're really zoomed out and you can't even see the, the subcutaneous fat even though it, it, it does exist in this patient. So, so uh, it's a very thick dermis, uh, but again, this is normal when you see it in the, in the back of the patient. Next structure we want to talk about in the, in the, in the dermis is the uh, 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 elastic fibers and ground substance. Um, remember that uh, 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 these two structures, both elastic fibers and ground substance, um, are also an integral part of the, of the dermis. The ground substance uh, maintains friction between the structures, it's good for shock absorbance, and the elastic fibers gives us the, uh, the, the, the elasticity and plasticity of the skin, uh, which uh, helps uh, the, the skin prevent it from wrinkling, for example, and returning to its normal shape after after movement if you want to see an example of a person with uh, with much less elastic fibers just look at your parents with their ugly skin or or if you're old you can even look at the mirror to, to see a good example of a, a person with decreased elastic fibers um so um normally like i said we don't see them uh, if they're in normal or if they're not damaged but uh, if they are damaged or uh, or increased uh, we can see them obviously without staining as you can see here in this patient who had uh, long-term heavy sun damage, you can see the, the nodules of uh, uh, deformed and ball-like uh, elastic fibers uh, that look like you know, grayish, pinkish, hyaline-like uh, uh, appearance. Uh, and this patient who has also, uh, if you notice, like the malignant melanoma. Um, if it's not uh, in increased or not deformed, the best way of uh, viewing the Elastic fibers is through the uh, VVG stain, the Van Gieta stain or the Shikata stain. Um, uh, if you can see here, the elastic fibers, like the collagen fibers, they start out as thin uh, fibers in the upper upper dermis, and they start to thicken as they go uh, low. Uh, elastic fibers uh, are very helpful to to, to tell us. Um, for example, when we see a hair uh, biopsy to determine if it's a scarring or non-scarring alopecia, because as we talked earlier, when you have a patient with a scarring alopecia or any form of scarring, they would have a decrease in elastic fiber. So we can see a very good example here of uh, lichen planoparlaris, for example. See here the wedge-shaped uh, 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 scar here, and this coincides with a wedge-shaped decrease in elastic fiber. As you can see how thickened it looks here, but it's uh, almost completely absent. In the, in the top uh, layer. Next is the ground substance, which we mentioned uh, earlier, and uh, mucin, uh, uh, which, uh, which is mainly mucin, uh, uh, like you know, hyaluronic acid, chondroitin sulfate, dermatin sulfate. Normally, just like the elastic fibers, normally we don't see them when they are in normal quantity, but uh, we very often see them even without uh, stains when they are increased in quantity. Um, as you can see here in, the, in, the, in this example of uh, mucinosis, which is uh, particularly scleroedema. Um, scleroedema, um, uh, I can tell this the case of scleroedema mainly because the involvement 
is deep and uh, almost spares the superficial parts in contrast to, for example, uh, square mix edema, which mainly involves the upper layers, or, or for example, the thyroid uh, uh, perceivable mix edema, which involves uh, the upper and lower uh, parts of the dermis. Uh, next uh, example is uh, uh, the stain that we would use very often. Uh, this is a, um, uh, we use either the colloidal iron uh, stain or, or, or there's uh, definitely other stains that you use, but uh, in our clinic we mainly use uh, uh, the coil iron. In this case, uh, particularly they used uh, alcyon blue, which also can be used to highlight mucin in cases where it's a little bit difficult. Um, remember that mucin or and identifying mucin is not just uh, important for mucinosis. Actually, that's a minority of what we've seen mucin for in, in, in our labs. Uh, uh, mainly, we use uh, mucin or try to identify mucin for connective tissue diseases and conditions like granuloma annulari, which is this, uh, the, the past case. So, um, moving on from uh, ground uh, substance, uh, we will uh, we will uh, talk now now a little bit uh, in uh, in uh, uh, more details about uh, um, uh, blood vessels. Um, so, um, uh, the sorry. Um, they are one of the most important supporting structures in the, the uh, dermis. So let's identify some of the blood vessels. So we can uh, talk about one. I want to see a very nice uh, vessel so I can uh, uh, talk about it a little more uh, more detail. Um, most of the ones we see here. Okay. So well, these are not very clear looking. They have. Okay, this is nice. So the blood vessels, in contrast to let's say other adnexal structures, they don't have a, uh, like more of an epithelium as much as an endothelium with the small cells peeking in, in, inwards to, into, the, into the lumen of the cytoplasm. Um, you would see blood cells uh, inside very often, as you can see here, blood, blood cells inside the vessels, and it's lined by an endothelium. The walls are usually very thin, but uh, as you go deeper in the, in the dermis, you would see uh, vessels with uh, thicker walls uh, and the larger diameters. You can see here, they start to get thickening uh, more thick walls, and you can see here again, the endothelial cells very nicely protruding a little bit into the cytoplasm. Not much to be called hobnail, but uh, somewhat protruding in, uh, inwards. Uh, blood vessels can have a lot of, can tell us a lot about disease. And when we see abnormalities in blood vessels, it can very often bring up the, the diagnosis. Uh, there's a uh, very quick examples. For example, here is vasculopathy. When you see like, you know, uh, in contrast to normal blood cells, you could see like a big clot, like a big chunk of a large blood cell that uh, occludes the whole uh, uh, blood vessel. Another example of abnormality, for example, is not inside the lumen, in the wall, in this case of levidoid uh, va vasculopathy or atrophy blanche. As you can see here, hyalinization and thickening of the uh, vessel wall, which often leads to ulcerations in the lower uh, extremity. Um, another example of abnormality we can see in blood vessels here is, is, is uh, vasculitis which uh, we uh, very often uh, uh, see in, uh, in our emergency service. Um, you can see here the leukocytoclastic cells. Uh, this is a case of probably um, uh, drug-induced vasculitis because we see also eosinophils, but forget about the cells, let's focus on the vessel. Um, you can see damage to the vessel wall here, fibrinoid uh, degeneration of the wall, very good sign, and, and, and leaking of the blood cells uh, outside the blood vessel, as you can see here more obviously. Um, another abnormality of uh, blood vessels is an increase in number, as you can see here in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a cherry angioma. And just like you know, you can have an increase in number, sometimes you can have a decrease in number, which is also abnormality that would help us uh, diagnose, for example, a sclerotic uh, condition and differentiate it from a fibrotic uh, condition. So uh, done with the um, uh, blood vessels, uh, we'll talk about another very important structure we have in the in the skin, and that's uh, hair, hair, uh, hair follicles. Um, we'll talk a little bit in detail about the different layers of our hair, but let's just have a general outline. Uh, the, the, the hair unit is composed of the, both the, 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 the hair uh, itself, uh, the sebaceous glands, and another important structure, what we see here, is the, uh, uh, the arachnopili muscle. Um, if, you, if you notice, you know, when you study about lyomyomas and you, you think about the cigar shaped nucleus because it's muscle. Um, remember that you know well, most of the muscles have these uh, carry these similar features. So 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 look here the the, the cigar shaped nuclei, the clear pinkish cytoplasm. So you don't see the hair because you know you, you, different sections show you different parts of each uh, unit. 
Um, the the, the Tibur sites are very characteristic with their like you know bubbly cytoplasm, and they are they attach to the upper part of the hair uh, follicle. The hair follicles, especially when they are uh, terminal anagen uh, hairs, they normally, especially in the scalp, they go all the way down to the to the to the fat. Uh, if you see the bulbs way up in the in the in the dermis, you think more towards uh, things that cause miniaturization of the hair because as they go smaller, they become shorter. So normally, you would see your your uh, hair shafts go all the way deep to the. Uh, uh, subcutaneous fat, especially in the scalp. Um, is there anything else I would like to show you here before we move on? I don't think so. We're gonna go into a little more detail about the uh, different layers of the hair shaft, and this is an anagen terminal hair. Um, uh, if you can see here, the central part of the, is the hair shaft itself, which co is composed of a medulla and a cortex, uh, followed by the inner root sheath, which is found mainly in the lower layer here, right? in the lower layers of the uh, uh, dermis and subcutaneous fat, and then starts to disappear when you go to the upper layers of hair. And then you've got your outer root sheath, uh, which starts to become continuous with the epidermis, and then the fibrous layer outside. These are important to recognize as, as layers of the hair. Um, another uh, thing I wanted to talk to you about is the different phases of, a, of, of a hair growth. Uh, we know that the hair goes in 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 in, uh, in uh, mainly three phases. You got your uh, an uh, anagen, uh, catagen, and telogen. So this is an anagen hair. You can see here the cells all look all normal. And uh, if you go to the base of the bulb, it would be like a hockey stick shaped or a, or, or or a golf stick shaped, depending on what sport you prepare, or or just an L shape if you're not into sports. Um, uh, and uh, as you go on through the, 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 the phases uh, and uh, you go to catagen phase, there are two main uh, features that you would notice. First of all, the ap apoptosis or apoptosis of the cells. They start to undergo apoptosis, as you can see here. And what we don't see very, mu uh, very clearly in this example, and maybe in this side more, is the basement membrane around the hair follicle starts to become thickened compared to here, which we don't even uh, see it. And as you move on through the, 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 the catagen phase and move in towards the telogen phase. So here is a, uh, between late catagen and early telogen, uh, you can see the apoptosis uh, uh, is going on and it's starting to take a flamethrower-like appearance, uh, which uh, manifests completely at the, at the telogen phase. And the bulb or the, uh, for the, for the base of the follicle itself starts to take a club shape rather than an, uh, uh, the hockey stick shape that we see with the anagen uh, hairs. Another important uh, distinction that you guys should uh, be aware of is the, the difference between uh, uh, terminal hair and, uh, and uh, villous hair. Um, there's a third type of uh, uh, hair, which is lanugo hair, but that usually you see it in newborns or in pathologic conditions, so we won't talk about it now. Um, the, the, one of the main uh, differences between uh, uh, anagen and, and villous hair is what we talked about earlier, how deep it goes because the anagen hair is usually large, so it goes deep and, and into the uh, subcutaneous fat, which we saw earlier. But here, if you notice the example, the, you see the, the, the bulb is so high up in the, in the dermis and does, it cannot even reach the, to the base of the dermis, let alone the subcutaneous fat. Uh, but when you have horizontal uh, uh, sections, like you see here, uh, and a, a very distinguishing feature that would help you uh, be aware of uh, the, the type of hair is the thickness of the uh, hair shaft compared to the inner root sheath. So if you can see here, the center white area uh, in the left is the hair shaft of the terminal hair. See, it's much larger than the diameter of the, of the red uh, inner root sheath. But on the right side, if you can see here, the hair shaft is much smaller than the diameter of the inner root sheath, which, uh, which is very characteristic of a, of a villous hair. Um, uh, the second component of the hair unit, uh, the sebaceous glands, uh, sometimes also, also can undergo abnormalities, which you should be aware of. Uh, we, earlier we saw the normal variant, but uh, now you can see the increase that uh, can happen in uh, sebaceous hyperplasia, which uh, clinically is very often misdiagnosed as uh, BCC. And uh, just like it could be increased, sometimes it could be decreased. Uh, as you can see here, the sebaceous glands are almost absent, which is uh, one of the hallmarks of a scarring. Uh, alopecia. Um, the muscle which we saw earlier, the um, erectopeli muscle, is not the only time we, we normally see muscles in the 
epidermis. This is, for example, a skin that is near the nipple. Uh, um, and you can see some uh, some uh, some uh, muscle fibers, which is very normal to find in that area. And uh, also in the genital area, we can find the, the dartoid muscle here, and uh, that is also a normal finding. So uh, when you see this, you don't quickly diagnose uh, leiomyoma or uh, or smooth muscle hypoplasia. Um, moving on to uh, other structures that are also essential uh, in the dermis, uh, like essential uh, supporting structures. Uh, we'll talk about uh, nerves and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, other adnexal structures. So uh, what we see here is uh, is one of the important uh, uh, nerve endings in our skin, which is the pacinian cor corpuscle, which uh, takes an uh, onion shape here. Uh, it's usually deep uh, and it's mostly found in uh, in uh, acro skin, which we can see, which uh, this is an example of. Uh, you can see how it's beautifully onion shaped. It's important in uh, detecting deep pressure. Uh, what we see here is a uh, nerve uh, fiber. You can see here the cells that remind you of a neurofibroma, like you know, see the the, the wavy uh, nuclei. And uh, as we go upwards uh, to the uh, to the dermal uh, um, epidermal interface, I'm looking for something else. What we see here is the Meissner's cor corpuscle, which uh, detects uh, fine touch, and they also are found mainly in uh, in acral uh, skin. Um, uh, there's something else I wanted to show you here. Uh, yes, here the uh, the uh, glands. So so you know the sweat glands. So in your skin you have mainly two types of sweat glands: the eccrine and epicrine. The epicrine is mostly found in the, in the in specific parts of the body, like you know the axilla or, or uh, near the breast. Uh, but the eccrine glands are found in most of your body, and especially in, in acral skin. So you got your glandular component here with clearish cells, and you got your ductal component. Here, so so it's a, in contrast to a blood vessel which has an endothelium. You can see a epithelium here, mainly made up of two layers. So it has its uh, its uh, either columnar or or cuboidal, uh, depending on the depth of the of the gland you're seeing, uh, and surrounded by myoepithelial cells, that, which are like you know pleomorphic in their shape. Um, so yeah, so these are the more uh, the most important uh, structures. So remember, whenever you see a space. In the in the in the in the dermis, like an empty white space in the dermis, you should think of really three main uh, uh, structures. You think, can think of blood vessels, you can think of glands or cysts, or you can think of uh, clefts, uh, clefts or, or or artifactual defects in the dermis. So these are the main three ways when you see a a, a white space in the uh, dermis. Okay, so um, uh, moving on to one of our last structures of this uh, uh, of this uh, lecture, and uh, that's uh, the subcutaneous fat. Um, it's situated uh, below the dermis. It's also very thick uh, normally. Um, it's composed mainly of two uh, 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 structures. It's either you can find the fibrous septa. Um, the fibrous septa is usually like you know thin uh, compared to the to the other structure, which is the fat lobules. Um, the fibrous septa can sometimes, however, be thickened uh, in conditions such as erythema nodosum, for example. Um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the fat lobules are, ma are mainly com uh, composed of adipocytes and some blood vessels that support them. Um, adipocytes, you know, when you process the fat, uh, the fat leaks out, so the adipocytes would just appear as clear cytoplasm. Uh, the nucleus is usually marginalized in the, in the border of the cells, as you can see here. Uh, and depending on the section, you might see the nucleus or not. Uh, for example, in this uh, cell here, you don't usually you don't really, really see the nucleus or this one, but you can see it in this one, for example. So um, uh, fat, just like other structures, can sometimes be uh, increased or decreased due to some uh, abnormalities. Um, uh, for example, here, um, uh, this is a case of lipoatrophy. So you compare the fat here to the uh, to the glandular component. Yeah, I have a zoom in the photo, which might be uh, clearer here. So you can see the fat uh, not only decreased in in, uh, in terms of the size of the lobules, but also in terms of the size of the adipocytes themselves. They can be very thin, small, and they're like you know tiny. They start to look like you know the the, the uh, equine uh, glands. Um, and sometimes the fat can increase in even non-neoplastic process, like here, for example, the nevus lipomatosis, where the fat is climbing up all the way almost to the epidermis, as you can see, pushing towards the epidermis. Um, 
Uh, last, but uh, like, not last actually, before last, but uh, so uh, nail uh, pathology can can have a whole presentation designated for it, but I won't go into much details about it. We'll talk about it in more detail when we talk about disorders relating to the nail. But when we talk about the, the, the nail unit, uh, there's four uh, structures that you really need to know. Um, the nail plate, which is uh, the, 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 the very often synonymously used with, uh, with the word nail. Um, uh, you can see the thick, very thick orthokeratotic uh, keratin, uh, the horn. And uh, below the nail plate is the, is the, um, uh, the nail bed, which is, has a very thin layer of uh, epidermis that sits directly on a very thick dermis, which uh, um, interestingly sits uh, almost directly on bone. There's not much fat uh, below, the, uh, below the dermis. Um, uh, in uh, in uh, the, the dorsum uh, of the, of your uh, of your uh, digit. Um, uh, approximately, when you move from the nail bed, you see the nail mat matrix, which has only collimal keratinization. Similar, that looks more like uh, tricholemal keratinization rather than epidermal keratinization, which is uh, you know without uh, a granular layer. Um, and uh, you can see, but it's still uh, in contrast to the nail bed. It keeps the retirage pattern. And as you go more proximal to the to the nail fold, which is basically normal skin, you can see the normal epidermal keratinization, uh, retirages, and the, the 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 dermis looks very much to what we saw earlier compared to here, the thick and hyalinized uh, dermis of the of the nail uh, unit. And uh, last, in, uh, in this presentation of uh, normal uh, skin. Uh, we will go to the uh, uh, oral mucosa, which uh, has a few uh, differences from our normal uh, uh, skin. Um, so um, uh, one of the striking features is a, a diminished uh, 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 hyper, uh, stratum corneum. Like there's almost no stratum corneum, which uh, you don't usually see except for certain pathologic conditions in the mouth. And then the rest of the spinous layer would, uh, if you notice, appear quite pale compared to the to the uh, uh, non-mucosal uh, sites, um, which is also a normal feature in the oral mucosa. And then when you go to the dermis, what's uh, pretty striking is, okay, there's a lot of blood vessels here, but uh, where are the adnexal structures, like other than vessels, uh, there's no hair, there's no uh, eccrine, no apocrine glands. Um, so so when you see this uh, you, uh, you, uh, picture, you would know that this is mucous membrane rather than, uh, rather than uh, cutaneous uh, uh, skin. Uh, so um, even though it doesn't have um, um, uh, eccrine or epicrine glands, uh, what uh, is uh, very clear or very prevalent in the oral mucosa are the uh, uh, sal salivary glands, as you can see here. So uh, salivary gl gland has a lot of uh, its uh, SNI, which is uh, the glandular component, and it has this ductal component, and it produces uh, the uh, saliva. So these are, this is the most important feature to, to recognize on uh, oral uh, mucosa. Um, so yes, uh, that, I think that's the last slide. I, I, I have a few slides uh, which I uh, presented last time talking about the different cell types and some uh, inflammatory patterns, but that was comprehensively covered uh, uh, earlier by uh, Dr. Alva in her fantastic uh, presentation. So um, uh, I think that's it for, 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 for the presentation. Um, if anyone has any questions uh, you want to ask, uh, for, like, you know, quite unusually we finished on time. Usually we finish like with a minute to spare or something, but uh, this time we finished uh, pretty much on time. So um, anyone uh, have, uh, has any lecture? Okay, so if there's no one has any lecture, just thank you again for, for attending this uh, lecture. And uh, we will see you next time uh, in our future presentation. Where the next presentation will be at Kodachrome another Kodachrome uh, section session um, where we talk about like, you know, case-based learning. Um, thank you again, uh, everyone for attending. Um, we appreciate the, your, your feedback for, uh, for our future lectures. You, you have our uh, emails, you can talk to us or, or if you can't uh, do it right now. Um, and looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much.